Hello, this is Satvi. The topic of our discussion in this video tutorial is continuous function. We will begin this video tutorial from the definition of continuous function. So let me first write on the definition. Uh, what does it mean by a function is continuous at a point? A function, let's suppose f, which is a defined from a set A, the set of real number, uh, is continuous at A, which is a member of the set A, uh, if and only if for all epsilon, for all epsilon strictly positive, we can find uh, a delta which also strictly positive uh, so that the distance between f of x and f of a is less than epsilon when x distance between x and a is less than delta and x is belong to for all these x which is belong to also a the second definition is what does mean by a function continues on a set if f is continuous at every point in the domain a then we say we say f is continuous on that is, if the fun function is continued at every point of the set A, then we will call the function is continued on A. The definition of the continuity of the function at a point, uh, it is look very similar to the definition of the functional limit. And uh, we are very tempting to say that a function is continued if the limit as x approaches to A of the function f of x is equal to f of A. And this definition, we also basically have seen that in calculus class. Uh, this definition is okay as long as A is a limit point, A is a limit point of A. But if A is not a limit point of A, this uh, definition breaks down because uh, in this situation, this limit uh, will not be defined. So let me give you an example. Let's suppose if we have a set A, which is one, one half, one third, and so on. Uh, and if I define a function f of x is equal to x square, and then uh, if I try to compute this limit, limit as x approaches to one half of this function f of x, and as you can see that the trend of the value as x approaches to one half is not defined. Uh, so this is not Defined because there are not many points which are approaching to one half, so that we cannot define this limit. However, we can use uh, the definition one to prove that the function f of x is continuous. So it's a continuous at x is equal to one half. So that can be done by using the definition one. So this concludes that the definition one is a, a bit more stronger than the definition which we have learned in our calculus class. Now let me summarize this discussion in this remark. So we can use the alternate delta definition of the continuity to prove that all the function, um, they are continued uh, at isolated point of their domain. Or in other words, if the point is isolated and this is the part of the domain of the function and the function must be continuity at that point. Next I will give you an example in which we will prove that the function f of x is equal to square root of x is continuous on the interval 0 to infinity. I will prove uh, this example by using the epsilon delta definition of the continuity. So first let a belongs to this interval 0 to infinity uh, d and arbitrary point or number. So I pick one arbitrary point from that interval. So I will prove that the, the function f of x is continuous at a. 
So in order to prove the continuity of the function at A, what I need to show, I need to show uh, the difference between the square root of X and the square root of A. I can make this as small as possible. Uh, when, uh, if I can find the difference between X and A, if I can find that delta. So I want to make this is some constant time X minus A. So I can choose a delta to make that dif difference uh, as small as possible. So let me do some scratch work to show something like this. So we will begin again from this is the square root of X minus square root of A. And I will multiply the conjugate of that on the top and also in the bottom. So if I simplify the top, it's going to be just x minus a, so there is absolute value. And uh, if I, the bottom is this. Because the square root of x is a positive function, so I can remove that. So it will be 1 over square root of a, x minus a. Now if I choose delta, so if I take my delta is equal to epsilon times square root of a, and then I can make this quantity less than epsilon. So now this is a scratch work. I will write it down as a, like a more formal proof here. So for all epsilon positive, uh, we choose, we choose delta is equal to square root of a time epsilon. Uh, then the difference between square root of x minus square root of a uh, is equal to uh, simply x minus a less than actually uh, divided by square root of a but since x minus a is less than delta and delta is less than square root of a time epsilon divided by square root of a which is equal to epsilon or in other words the square root of x minus square root of a is less than epsilon when x minus a is less than uh, delta. This implies square root of x is continued at x is equal to a. Here I have one quiz problem for you to practice. Please pause the video for one and two minutes and work on this problem. We saw in our previous video, in addition to the epsilon delta definition uh, of the functional limit, uh, there was a useful formulation in term of the sequence. Uh, the same is true for uh, continuity. In this theorem, summarize that the various equivalence way to characterize the continuity of a function at a given point. But the most important uh, one is the third one, where you will see that a function is continuous if it is a true that for all sequence, xn approaches to a, and xn belongs to A, it follows that the sequence f, the sequence f xn approaches to f of A. The proof of this theorem is just to combining the uh, previous video uh, result uh, with the definition which I give you in the beginning of this video. So I will left the viewer to prove this theorem, uh, just basically putting all these things together and write down a formal proof of this uh, uh, theorem. Now we can use the previous theorem and especially the part three, the sequential property of the continuous function uh, to prove this corollary, uh, which is the algebraic continued theorem, which tell us that uh, uh, which algebra is true for the continuous function. Again, I will let the viewer to prove this theorem. The sequential characterization of continuity is typically most useful for demonstrating that a function is not continuity at a point. So next I will write down what is the criteria for proving a function is discontinued. So here is the statement of the uh, criteria for discontinuity. Uh, to prove that a function is discontinued, you need to find a sequence uh, 
uh, xn, which is basically the member of your domain. And then you prove that if this sequence is converges to A, which is the limit point of uh, the set A, uh, then, uh, but the, when you plug that sequence into the function, the, the functional sequence f x of n does not converge to f of A, then we say that the function is discontinuity at x is equal to A. Let me give you an example to elaborate this a little bit more. My example is this function, f of x is equal to uh, the floor function, or sometimes the uh, people call it the greatest integer function. Uh, the, the graph of this function is uh, at 0 to 1, if there is a fall at 1, and then it's just it's like a stuck function. There is a fall at there, and then it's going to keep on going. We can prove that for all integer value, this function is a discontinuity. For example, I can show that this function is a discontinuity at x is equal to one. So in order to do that, I will find a sequence. So one minus one over n, this is a sequence. This is a sequence is converges to one. But if I plug that sequence into the function fn, uh, fx of n, then it will be a zero because any value of the function uh, from the interval zero to one is zero. So clearly this sequence f of x n is not converges to one. Therefore the function is, so f of x is this uh, continuity at x is equal to one. And similarly, you can prove the function is discontinuity at x is equal to two, three and so on. Uh, this is the end of our video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Uh, bye for now.